Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. A uh, little bit different today, we've had a lot of snow in the past couple of days, so uh, not lots been going on out there. It's currently something like minus 4, or oh, I don't know, minus 48.572 degrees outside, so it's really cold, uh, far too cold to be messing about with garages or cars or anything like that. So what I thought I'd do for today's episode is so it'll give you some content and something to feast your peepers on and keep you entertained during this miserable weather, a miserable time that we're all having at the moment anyway, is uh, I thought I'd go through and introduce one of my cars in full to the channel and also uh, go through its history since I've had it and things I've done with it. Now unfortunately it's not filmed because I didn't have the ability of filming uh, when I first bought the car. So a lot of it is just photographic, but obviously I'll be talking through the photographs as they go through and uh, any updates of what's changed on the car since I bought it, I'll, um, I'll just read through uh, or talk through as, uh, as you're looking at the photographs. So we'll see if we can go on to that one and then we'll, we'll go from there and we'll see if we can get everything done that way on and at least you'll have something to watch, something to listen to and something to look at and then hopefully the next episode that comes around will be outside doing something because it is heading quickly into springtime. Hopefully that's going to make uh, the weather warm a little bit as well. So this then is double zero garage, the 68 Charger. Here it is then, my 1968 Dodge Charger, which I've owned since October of 2005. Uh, I did actually buy it from the Bay of Fleet. Uh, it was down in Luton and uh, I took the train down with payment for the car and then drove it home uh, which had no real trouble on the way home. Uh, it was a bit of a scary drive because um, if you've never driven one before they're a very strange car to get used to just with regards to the way the handle. Um, it was, it, it's hard to explain really but it wasn't, although it was a pleasurable drive uh, to come home with it, it just wasn't really an enjoyable drive. Um, but it's had a, a lot of work done to it, or I've done a lot of work to it since then. However, when, when I first got it, it was a 383 cubic inch V8 engine, which equates to a 6.2 litre uh, over here in the UK, backed by uh, a 727 automatic, a 727 torque flight automatic gearbox, which is column shift, so the gear sticks on the steering column, and uh, it came with drum brakes all round, uh, power steering, and also a vinyl roof. Um, the standard radio was in, which was all seized and, uh, and locked up, so that didn't work at all. So it was a quiet journey on the way home. Well, I'm saying quiet, as quiet as a V8 Dodge Charger can be uh, on the motorway through the night when you're coming home. But um, that's that's pretty much it as it is. It's, I do have to say, because it keeps playing on my mind every time I get into a conversation with somebody about it, it keeps playing on my mind that I wasn't initially looking for a 68 Dodge Charger. I actually wanted a 69 model. Um, purely because of the divider in the front grille and the strip lights at the back rather than the two circular lights which you'll be able to see in the photos as I scroll through if they haven't already gone past. And uh, I wanted one without the vinyl roof and floor shift change on uh, on the gearbox. Unfortunately, um, when I was looking for one, I had the money to get one. Um, I only managed to find a six, or the only I've seen, I managed to find the only one that was available for me in the UK because I didn't really want to go through the whole process of importing one from the USA because I didn't know very lot about that at the time. So uh, I hadn't actually done that. For me it would be much easier to buy one in the UK, go and pick it up and bring it home and then it was all done and a nice easy process. So instead of ending up with a, uh, a non-vinyl roof floor shift automatic 69 Dodge Charger, I ended up with a column shift automatic vinyl roofed 68 Dodge Charger. Uh, according to the details that came with the car, the vinyl roof that's on it at the moment is the original vinyl roof from 1968. That's never been changed. It's been on there since the car was uh, assembled at the factory. And um, the paintwork that you're looking at, as you see that on there, the paint colour, it's actually Jaguar Nightfire Red. Um, when it first came into the country, it was like a flat red. Um, I suppose more closely related to a Rosso Red that you would find on some escorts back in the day. Uh, so this was um, was stripped apart, it was taken down to bare metal and it was resprayed in Jaguar Nightfire Red. Now that was done back in 1998, the car having come into the country in 1997 and that was done by the previous owner 
it's it's a lovely colour, especially when it's polished and the sun's out. Although it is now starting to show its age, being as how it's been painted that colour for so long. So we'll just get into uh, what I've done to it, uh, what the first thing was that I did to it, and any future plans that may be happening for the car. Now you may also notice that in some of the photos, it's on um, polished centerline wheels, and in other photos, it's on Wolf Race slot wheels. Um, the reason for the change is when I bought it, it was on the um, the polished centerline wheels, which were a 14 inch diameter. Um, they looked great, uh, they, they certainly looked nice and clean, they were nice and clean, they looked amazing. But where I live, we have a lot of the dreaded speed humps or speed ramps, depending how you look at them, traffic calming, I suppose they are. And every time I drove over one, uh, no matter how slow I went over it, it would grind out on uh, on the speed drum on the exhaust as it went over it. So rather than put up with that, um, I decided to change the the 14 inch polished centre lines for a set of 15 inch Wolf Race slot mags that I had kicking around in the garage at the time. Um, so they came out of the garage, went onto the car. They're a 15 inch. Now currently the front is 7 by 15 and the back is 8.5 by 15. Raising it that extra inch has made all the difference and it no longer catches on any speed ramps in the area at all at the moment. Okay, so that's an introduction to the charger. Um, how it's running at the moment, it's, uh, it, well it's currently road legal. Um, at the moment it has no MOT due to the fact that because of its age it no longer requires an MOT. So it's not actually MOT at the moment, it was MOT about a year and a half ago. So everything's solid, um, there's nothing to worry about. I will be keeping a close eye on everything, obviously, just to make sure that it is still safe and, um, and rust-free in all the important areas. We don't want any nasty accidents happening. I certainly don't want to lose it due to lack of maintenance. So I will be keeping an eye on, on that and keeping on top of things. Uh, it is taxed and it is insured. So at the moment, it's, if it wasn't so bad outside but otherwise, you could fire it up and I could take it out, go for a drive in it. I'm waiting for the better weather to happen for that though. And uh, so anything needs doing to it at the moment. There's a little bit of rot that has set in in the, rear, the lower rear quarters on both sides. I do have replacement panels for those. So that will be getting done. That will be getting welded back in and getting replaced. Um, the floor itself is fine, absolutely fine. The boot floor is starting to get a little bit suspect so we'll probably need replacing at some point later this year or maybe next year. Uh, I would have thought if I don't do it this year it'll definitely need doing next year. So that'll be on the cards. Um, whilst running, whilst driving, it's it, it started to behave strangely with regards to cooling. Um, it's, it, it's not overheating, it hasn't overheated at all yet, uh, but it is, there's a cold patch in the radiator um, and the top hose of the radiator isn't actually warming up in line with the rest of the, the rest of the cooling system when the bottom hose is nice and hot and parts of the radiator are hot that hose isn't. Now I suspect it could be because uh, the hoses look fine, so all the cooling hoses look absolutely fine so I'm suspecting it could be something to do with the thermostat or possibly and more likely uh, the radiator. I do believe that on the car it is the original radiator so it could be something to do with that so rather than mess about and change the radiator and then change the thermostat and then change something else, um, I'm just going to order what well, I have ordered, or actually I'm about to order, all of the cooling system. I'm replacing everything. So that will be the coolant hoses, the radiator, the thermostat and the water pump. Uh, I'm just going to replace everything and that way it's a brand new cooling system. Whilst I'm doing that of course I'll have the chance to, um, I'll have the chance to uh, flush out the engine so that will get taken care of and we'll be able to do that and then we'll start afresh with a brand new cooling system and hopefully that will solve those problems. Uh, what I'd like to do, I'd like to remove the engine at some point and pull that apart and give that a bit of a freshen up and a bit of painting, uh, clean the engine bay up and paint the engine bay a little bit. Uh, I'd also like to rewire it and um, so I've never done wiring at all in my life but I do know with the painless wiring kits and similar, obviously there's more than one manufacturer of wiring, of wiring kits on the market. Um, I do know that they they all come ready labelled so you, you know where everything is going and the whole car is standard. The only non-standard item on it really is the radio. Uh, everything else is uh, is perfectly standard as it left the factory in 1968. It is a numbers matching car. 
Um, so having said that, it has had a rear quarter replaced on the driver's side, so the left hand side, for people over here in England. Um, it's had a rear quarter replaced at some point in its past life. Um, it was already like that when I got it, so it, it has had a replacement panel. Uh, there is some filler in it in various places, uh, so that's going to need investigating because it's starting to sink. Bearing in mind it's been on the road in the UK since 1997 and we're now in 2021 and I bought it since 2005. So I've done various maintenance things on it. It's had oil changes, air filter changes, plug changes, wires changed, etc. Um, it, it hasn't had any major work done because it hasn't needed any major work. So uh, it gets, if you're in the northeast or Northumberland, you may well recognise it. You may well have seen it kicking about quite a lot. Uh, it has been down at Santa Pod as well, and we did take it down the racetrack. No, we didn't do very well, um, owing to the fact that I, it was my first time there ever, and I may have forgotten to empty the boot of all the tools and the camping stuff that was in there at the time that I went down the track. Anyway, uh, so next time I'll be doing that. Uh, any future modifications, I'd, I'd like to get it to um, handle a bit more like a modern car on the road, or as good as I can get it to handle like a modern car on the road. I'm also interested in upgrading the fuel system, so bigger fuel pump, uh, bigger fuel lines, uh, just to get more fuel fed into it when I'm driving it, make it a little bit easier to have some fun with and drive around on the street. Um, I can't get anything else at the moment. It does need a repaint, so once I start welding the rear quarters up, obviously it's going to have to be repainted, so that's on the cards for the future as well. I think the way it's probably going to go is do the rear quarters, uh, put the panels on, and then put some form of covering on to paint it and protect it. And then uh, I think after that we'll go back to the front suspension, and I may start that again, because although I've replaced it once already, I replaced, and really all it was that I replaced was the, um, the lower control arm installation pins and all of the bushes underneath the car. Everything else has been left the same. So it's all original underneath as far as the, the, the hardware is concerned. But um, with us wanting to get it to handle a bit better and drive a bit more drivability uh, on the local roads whenever we're out and about in the car, I think I might uh, I might look at um, changing the, the upper and lower control arms, um, stiffer torsion bars or thicker torsion bars, uh, maybe a thicker roll bar at the front, uh, a roll bar at the back, any roll bar that is, uh, or sway bar as, uh, as you might know the lad. I might add one of those at the back and um, change the one at the front for a, a, a better one or a stiffer one to give it a, a bit more handle. Uh, the shock absorbers are on there at the moment. It's on KYB shock absorbers. I put those on back in 2006, as far as I can remember. So I might investigate changing those because they've been on there quite a while now. They still work, absolutely fine. Uh, last time it was MOT, they went sailing through the MOT on the shock absorbers. But they're a bit dated now, so I may look into changing that. And as I said earlier in the uh, in the episode, the, the headlights uh, want something to go with as well. And then uh, maybe at some point I'll get round to doing something to the interior, uh, just smarten up really. Um, I'm not going to change anything in the car, uh, although it will be modified. It's well, it already is modified with the, the different steering that it didn't uh, that it didn't come with and the different brakes than what it came with. But whereas I want to modify it, I want to ma modify it to make it safer in modern day traffic, easier to drive and handle in modern day traffic, and easier to keep up with various other things in modern day traffic. But I don't want to sort of modify it beyond it being a Dodge Charger. Um, initially I was going to, I was debating um, painting it in orange, because obviously we all believed when we were 14 that the orange Dodge Chargers can fly. Um, I have no problems at all, or I had no problems at all in doing that. Uh, one or two things happened though, and um, it didn't quite turn out that way, so it was left with the black vinyl roof and the Jaguar Nightfire red paint for now. That may well change in the future as well. But in the meantime, it's literally just a case of um, making it reliable once it's getting driven again. Uh, oh, the other thing I've done, uh, while I remember, I converted it to, well, I'm saying I converted it with the help of a mate of mine, known by Dave, um, we converted it, or he converted it for me, to full electronic ignition. So it's no longer points, it's uh, it's an electronic ignition now. still runs on a carburetor, it's still the original carburetor, as far as I'm aware. So that might need looking into. I'm in two minds at the moment as to whether I think about the possibility of AFI, 
and I know there's some excellent kits out there on the market these days, so I'm not too sure whether I want to go down the route of AFI or leave it on a cob and have it naturally aspirated. Um, time will tell, I suppose, depending on, uh, on which way the build goes. So that's pretty much it for the charger. Uh, not many future plans other than keeping it nice and keeping it looked after and enjoying the car. Hopefully at some point we'll get a return back to car shows and local car meets and uh, you'll see it there on occasion. You'll see it at car shows, you'll see it in cruisers. Um, I run an uh, extremely successful uh, cars and coffee meet. It's a local cafe in Bedlington called uh, Barrington's. Uh, that normally happens under normal circumstances. That will happen every Wednesday night. Uh, with the recent news that came out, we're looking forward to getting back into that. We're already planning uh, how it's all going to work out and how we're going to do it moving forward. So we do hope to see a lot of you northeastern and Northumberland or, uh, car owners down there as usual. Uh, let's see if we can get back to what well, ultimate of, um, I think it was set between 75 and 80 cars we're getting regularly on a Wednesday night. So I'd hope to improve on that now that we're going to get back into things, hopefully as soon as we can, and see if maybe we can work in top 100. And uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a bit of fun with that. But look, before I get back into that, but that is, as I say, that's Barrington's in Bedlington. It's on the Barrington Road. Uh, you can't miss it, really, when you're driving along there. And uh, hopefully we'll be back there every Wednesday night and be as successful as we always have been. What we've been in the past. We've been running that, uh, well, until all the aggro that we're going through at the moment, it was a straight five years that that had run there, uh, successfully uh, run there for. So we're looking forward to getting back into that. And uh, I think other than that, that's it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, this episode. I hope it hasn't been too boring just looking at photos and me droning on. Uh, I do have a load of parts on order for the three cars, uh, the, the Dodge Charger, the uh, Ford Ranchero, and the Toyota Hilux. There are parts on order. As soon as they get here, um, we'll be able to start messing about with those. Now the weather hopefully is going to warm up a little bit. So we've got uh, the parts for the Ranchero and the Charger coming from the States and obviously the parts for the Hilux coming from Japan. So we're a bit stuck with customs. There's a bit of delays going on, but as soon as they get here, obviously we'll start doing stuff. And um, the garage, of course, is uh, is still going on. So work on the garage is starting to improve. I'll drop another video of that uh, as soon as I get finished editing the, the bits and pieces I've done out so far. So you'll get, keep up to date with that one. If there's anything you want to know or any comments you want to make or any questions you have, drop them in the comment section below. You know what to do. Just put your comments in there. I'll get notified of those and uh, I'll reply to your comments or I'll answer your questions. If you want your car featured on, uh, on one of the episodes and you live in North East England or Northumberland, um, get in touch with us. Send us an email. It's uh, double zero garage at gmail.com. Send us an email. Tell us uh, what you've got. A couple of photos. It doesn't have to be fantastic photos. There's a couple of photos so I can see it. And um, I'll be in touch with you and I'll make arrangements to get uh, get down to yourself or over to yourself and film it either your, your garage, your workshop, your unit, wherever you keep your car. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a car that's on the road. It can be an ongoing project that's currently in pieces that you're hoping to see on the road this summer or next summer. Uh, or it can be a car you've worn for a while and you, you enjoy it as much as you possibly can when the weather's nice. Uh, and that's all vehicles as well, not just American vehicles, that's all vehicles. So um, classic, cherished, vintage, customised, modified vans, bikes, uh, scooters, pickup trucks, anything that, uh, that is your pride and joy. And uh, we'll come down, we'll do some video footage and uh, we'll get you on one of the channels at some point. There's a bit of an interview with you, unless you're camera shy, in which case we'll just have a walk around the car, get some video footage and maybe some off-camera comments from yourself to put on the channel. But we'll get that done as well and get some more content going on the channel. I am going to try and get the videos out a lot earlier, a lot sooner or a lot quicker so you'll get more content to watch. Um, customs, the way things are at the moment, has held us up with parts and the weather has held us up with messing about in the garage. So we'll get into those as soon as we possibly can and we'll see if we can get one or two surprises for you along the way as well. So, you know what to do. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Any comments you want to make, drop them in the, in the details in the details of area up, uh, below there. And if you want to get in touch, it's double zero garage at gmail.com. And hopefully you've liked this one. We'll see you in the next episode. Uh, until then, bye-bye for now.